So today we'll see <coughs> the friction associated in the clutch. As you can see, we have a single <coughs> plate clutch here. Okay, this is a single plate clutch here. <coughs> here, uh, essentially, um, we have the driving shaft that is the shaft connected with the branch shaft of the engine and the driven shaft okay and the function of this uh, clutch plate is to transmit the torque from the driving shaft okay from the driving shaft to the driven shaft here <coughs> so basically um, it consists of a clutch plate whose both sides are covered with some uh, friction material as you can see here this is uh, the disc okay this is the clutch plate okay on its both side we have uh, friction plates with some friction materials embedded here in this portion not on the whole surface but on some radial width okay it is basically uh, this friction material is uh, ferredo is known as this friction material Material is called ferreto. Okay, so the clutch plate is held between the flywheel and the pressure plate. So flywheel is connected with the driving shaft. Okay, this is the flywheel, and this one is the pressure plate. Here you can see. This is pressure plate. Okay, so <coughs> the spring which are kept uh, circumferentially, we might have uh, four or eight springs as per the requirement. This is a cut section because of that we can see only two springs here. If you draw the side view, let's say. Uh, this is the side view. We'll have maybe four springs, okay, like this, or they may be six, they may be eight, okay. So the springs which are kept circumferentially provide axial force on the pressure plate to keep the clutch in engaged position. Remember, when we are not applying any force on the pedal at that time the clutch is in engaged position, position because of the spring action. Okay. The friction plate which is mounted on a hub, actually you can see this one is the hub. Okay. The friction plate is mounted on the hub and it is free to slide on the splined shaft. Okay. The shaft is splined one so as to uh, have an engagement with the driving shaft. Both the flywheel and the pressure plate rotate uh, <coughs> with the driving shaft and thus enable the driven shaft to rotate if the contact between the flywheel and the clutch plate is tight. Okay, okay. when they are in engaged position. When <coughs> we apply a force on the clutch pedal here, that time what happened? It, <coughs> it pulled the pressure plate back. Okay, against the spring action or the spring force and the clutch is disengaged during that period when you are applying pedal force that time uh, we are applying some force against the spring and the pressure plate comes back side okay to back side and the clutch plate is disengaged from the flywheel okay. and we can change gears during this period okay so in that position the friction plate will not have any tight contact with the clutch plate and so the torque cannot be transmitted from the driving shaft to the driven shaft you can see okay now coming to the basic mechanics here so essentially a single plate clutch consists of a disc as i told you and friction plate with friction linings okay. 
friction linings. So this is friction lining. And W is the axial thrust used to act on it. And R1 is the outer radius. This radius is called R1. This is the outer radius and this is the inner radius known as R2. P is the intensity of pressure at the friction surface united by small p. Okay. Now, <coughs> if you draw the side view, it will be a circle. Here you can see. So the outer radius is R1 and the inner radius is R2. So we can write here that let W is the axial thrust. Axial thrust and the friction surface T is the torque transmitted torque transmitted by the clutch P is the intensity of pressure, intensity of pressure, R1 is the outer radius, R2 is the inner radius, inner radius and we have mu which is the coefficient of friction okay. so we can write mu is the mu is the coefficient of friction okay. now considering <coughs> Uniform pressure case, uniform <coughs> pressure theory, we have <coughs> intensity of pressure, intensity of pressure P is the axial thrust W divided by the area effective area that is pi into R1 square minus R2 square let this be equation 1 now total frictional torque acting <coughs> frictional torque T is equal to 2 by 3 mu w r1 q minus r2 q divided by r1 square minus r2 square okay. and this is equal to mu w r where this r is the mean radius of friction surface friction surface okay which is equal to 2 by 3 2 by 3 r1 q minus r2 q divided by r1 square minus r2 square okay 
So let this be equation 2. This is equation 3. Okay. Now, considering uniform wear to uniform wear theory total frictional torque total frictional torque T is equal to half mu w r1 plus r2 okay, which is also equal to mu w r capital R indicates the mean radius of the friction surface here you can see and here this r will be equal to r1 plus r2 by 2 okay so in general you can write in general total frictional torque total frictional torque T is equal to N mu W R where N is the number of pair of friction or contact surface number of pair of friction or contact surface and R is the uh, mean radius mean radius of friction surface surface so which is equal to 2 by 3 R1 Q minus R2 Q divided by r1 square minus r2 square for uniform pressure theory okay and <coughs> it is equal to half r1 plus r2 for uniform wear theory remember this and this small n uh, let's say in the problem it is given both side of the clutch plate is effective that means n is equal to 2 likewise okay number of pair of friction or contact surface <coughs> now multiple disc clutch multiple disc clutch here there will be <coughs> number of clutch plates instead of uh, one there will be number of clutch plates here you can see let me take a figure for you here you can see this is the multiple clutch plates okay we have multiple friction linings and multiple disc okay so this is the driving shaft or engine shaft this is the driven shaft here you can see and <coughs> to the driving shaft flywheel is attached and on the other side pressure plate is attached and both are conducted by clutch plate during the engaged position remember so let n1 is the number of disc number of disc on driving shaft n2 the number of disc on driven shaft then uh, number of 
pair of contact surface contact surface that is n is equal to n1 plus n2 minus 1 here you can see uh, <clears throat> this upper friction linings are attached to the driving shaft here 1 2 3 you can see and this disc or plates are connected to the driven shaft so n1 is the number of disc on the driving shaft n2 is the number of disc on the driven shaft so number of pair of contact n is equal to n1 plus n2 minus 1 okay. and then everything else will be same as that of your single plate clutch so i am not writing the <coughs> equations next is your cone clutch cone clutch okay. so in your cone clutch This is the basic schematic of a cone clutch. Okay. So, in considering uniform pressure, uniform pressure, a torque transmitted will be 2 by 3 mu w cosec alpha. R1 Q minus R2 Q divided by R1 square minus R2 square. Okay. And <coughs> for uniform wear, this T will be half mu W cosec alpha R1 plus R2. Okay, where this alpha is the semi cone angle. Okay, so here you can see R1 is represented by RO because in some cases this is equal to R1 and RI is equal to R2. Okay. You remember one notation only. Then suppose uh, this is the basic about uh, clutch, then further we will discuss some uh, problems on this clutch friction.